Hickman is getting to within reaching distance here as well. Under the Cheshire Mouldings Bridge, there is Peter Hickman, number 60, FHO Racing BMW. It's been a good ride this from Hickman from eighth on the grid. Well, if there's anything that'll spur a rider on, it's getting a quick teammate, and he's got one now. That is very true, and he said actually he was quite encouraged by what happened with Brooks at Silverstone a couple of weeks ago. Further back through the pack, there's Kyle Ride. Got a bit of clear track ahead of him, Christian Eden and Storm Stacey. He's faded a little bit, as you probably would have expected. Yeah. But still, still positive a top, 10, him. top yep. 10 will Brilliant. do for Storm Stacey, given uh, how he went on last year. Lee Jackson has climbed from 18th on the grid to 10th. Danny Kent has faded a bit. He's dropped back to 11th ahead of Nesbitt and number four, Jack Kennedy. Speedy top speeds. Leon Haslam on top of that one, but only just locked on. Yeah, 160.1. There's nothing in that. Breaking into Shell Oils, can Leon Haslam get close enough to take a bite at Josh Brooks? Has Peter Hickman got anything left in the tank in fourth? He's worked very hard to get to, to the get back end is. of this group. Yeah, he has. But we are running out of time. There'll be three laps to go when they cross the line next time. Glenn Irwin still looks pretty comfortable in third as well. He's regrouped a little bit. Is Brooks just managing this? perfectly out front he did this at Silverstone a couple of weeks ago the red flags came out early on he would love to pick up an outright victory seeing the checkered flag yeah and Glenn Irwin was really uh, annoyed about that he felt that given another couple of three laps and oh, if the race had gone full distance he would have had a good chance of winning it and you wouldn't argue with that so we ride well there hasn't been able to close into that group and now he's just gonna have to try and hold fifth because Andrew Irwin is having a resurgence so, across the line we go then to start lap 9 of 12, 10 of 12, sorry, three laps to go. This is the battle for fifth and sixth between Bridewell and Irwin. On that last lap, Hickman was the only rider again In, into the 34s. But they are on sort of 35 laps, 35 ones. So he's, he's not doing just enough at the minute with the laps we've got left, isn't Peter Hickman? Good job from him, though. Overall. This is how the grid would look tomorrow if things stay the way they are for now. Tommy Bridewell would be on pole. That's a bit of a turnaround from row five, isn't it? That's where he needs to be. It's his grip position that's hampered him this race, no doubt. So we've not really seen any chopping and changing of positions. Haslam second and Irwin third haven't been able to do anything about Brooks so far. Hickman is still just about clinging on yeah, to the battle in four. And that's what it is now, I think. Is this uh, Glenn on his way? He's having a look. He's quite close Pulled enough back in. to make the move. And so we stay as we are. I think now, with what we've got, two and a half laps left, if Glenn could go, he needs to be doing it now because he's only going to get past Aslan if he doesn't have another couple of laps at this. So he needs to be having a go at Leon if he can. The new point system in place means it's 18 points for a win, 16 for second, 14 for third. Not a lot to split them, but you still want to be on that top step. And Brooks here is about to start the penultimate lap of the race. And you're right, James, I think that Glenn Irwin is going to have to try and find a way through. Leon has done fast across the line. There's nothing to split them again. We've got rain flags at Island and oh, Shell. That's, that's gonna, not that, what you want to see. Isn't no, and you don't want it. Well, you do want to be at the front because if they stop it, you want the win. But it's really difficult when you see those flags to be at the front. You want to be going quick enough so nobody can catch you. But you don't want to go flying in there onto a wet track and, and go down the road. It's difficult for yeah. a rider this. And they've done such a splendid job so far. But yeah, mentally, that's not what you want to see at all. Let's see how it affects the riders then because we're getting close to seeing the chequered flag. It's Brooks, Haslam. And Glenn and Irwin's got... Him, that's affected Yeah, Glenn Irwin yeah. and Peter Hickman have got their arms up in the air. Yeah, and, and you see a couple of them have got slides there. They know it's wet. They're coming onto the dry bit of track now. Yeah, red, red flag, flag has been it. stopped. It's, it's another win for Josh Brooks Brilliant. under a red flag, but he's done a stunning job. And Josh Brooks then does take the win here at Alton Park from Leon Haslam and Glenn Irwin. And it's more celebrations from Fejo, for Mark Woodage, who maintains this 100% record of podiums as a crew chief. The first podium of the year for the Rocket BMW team as well. Yep, crew chief Simon Green, old uh, mechanic of mine there, good kid.
right thing to do, I think, there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they all went into the shallows hairpin and they all had slides, did really well to stay on, all four of them. Josh. Like I said, really difficult to be in that position. You're up front, you don't want to make a mistake, but you want, you need to push on. You've got to read conditions instantly and it's very, very easy to get it wrong. Josh Brooks then, his second win of 2023. Honestly, if this season pans out for Josh Brooks like it is, what an inspired choice from Feho with whatever uh, advice she had from other people to, to take on Josh Brooks. There were not many people in the paddock. Who would have done that? that? Who would have done it? Who would have seen it, seen it coming? No, absolutely. Brilliant. But yeah, absolutely sensational stuff once more, once more from Brooks, from pole to victory. And it's great to see Leon Hazel back on the, the podium as well. Glenn Irwin, that's his third podium of the season. And I know we're only at round two, but that keeps him in the mix. Yeah, the, the, the rain falling in that particular uh, bit of the track is a sector flag. So that means that the, the, the marshals can put it out themselves when it rains. It's not like the red flag and most of the flags are put out centrally. They're ordered to put them out. Uh, not that one. If it rains in that sector, they get that flag out. Well, Josh will be, I mean, the only disappointment he'll possibly feel, James, is just that he, he hasn't seen the chequered flag and the red flag comes early, but he'll he take that. Be, I, I, he, that won't bother him a jot. <laughs> and there's the big hug from Feho to Josh Brooks then. Fantastic work from him. And Amy comes over for a big cuddle as well. That well deserved. The riders in Park firm, eh? Le Leon Haslam again. Brilliant. Back on the podium, the former champion. That's his 105th British Superbike podium. Let's get the results then for you here at Alton Park. Red flag cut the race short, but only by a lap and a bit. Brooks wins it from Leon Haslam and Glenn Irwin. Peter Hickman, a really good charge through to fourth place ahead of Tommy Bridewell. Andrew Irwin was sixth ahead of Carl Ride with Iden in eighth. Storm Stacey in ninth place ahead of Jackson, Charlie Nesbitt and Jack Kennedy in 12th. There were points on offer for Luke Mossy as well. Tom Neve and Danny Kent just faded a bit in their closing stages there, but he holds on to a point in 15th ahead of Josh Owens. And this is how it looks in the standings. After four races in 2023, nine points the difference. Glenn Irwin and Tommy Bridewell, the teammates locked on points, but they're nine off the championship leader, FHO Racing BMW rider, Josh Brooks. Leon Haslam has climbed up into fifth place behind Carl Ryan. Have further down, of course, Ryan Vickers not here. Nesbitt picked up a couple of points there in 14th as well. And Storm Stacey's first points are on the board in 16th. 